Hi, Mark here from LoganFiles.com. Today we're going to be discussing Wolverine Origins number 36. This book is the conclusion to the storyline Weapon 11. We start off with Dakin and the Tinkerer examining the Mira Mesa uh, metal, which they find out is not a metal at all. Uh, and uh, Tinkerer tells Dakin that he's going to have these uh, adamantium inserts put into his uh, body. That way the uh, Mira Mesa blade will not uh, hurt him and uh, will be safely uh, in his arm uh, and won't uh, separate his skin. So uh, I guess adamantium has some resistance to this. Wolverine uh, wakes up from being knocked out by uh, Victor uh, Hudson. He then uh, tries to concentrate. He's still dazed. He lets a little bit of the beast out of him to just get going and follow that scent like an animal. He starts running through the streets, running through the alleyways, um, rushing, rushing, jumping over cars. He ends up finding Victor Hudson in an alleyway, leaps to attack him, and Victor Hudson smashes him through, catches him and smashes him through a window. Victor Hudson pounds on uh, Wolverine for a while and then uh, takes off. Wolverine gets up, still, still dazed, follows the scent to a sewer hole where he jumps down into the sewer to catch up with Victor Hudson. Wolverine jumps down the sewer onto the train where uh, Dakin and Tinker are inside. Uh, Wolverine then uh, realizes that uh, someone else is there too. Uh, Victor Hudson grabs Wolverine from the train, throws him down in between two of the cars, and they start having a battle in between two of these cars. Uh, they battle it out. Um, Victor Hudson is basically just whomping on Wolverine. Wolverine then realizes that he's doing it for a purpose. Uh, basically Romulus is in one car and Dakin and Tinker are in the other and Wolverine realizes that uh, they're trying to get him to fight Romulus and Victor Hudson um, and not save his son. Wolverine realizes this and separates the two trains. He gets up staggers through the uh, train car, opens it up, and uh, is surprised at what he sees. Wolverine enters and finds the Tinkerers sitting in front of a what appears to be a Weapon X tube. Wolverine realizes that he's too late. Dakin wakes up, smashes out of the tube, and unleashes his claws. And there we see that Dakin has had his center blade, the one that comes out of his wrist, uh, he's had it plated with the Mara Mesa blade. The Tinker explains that he's turned Wolverine's son into a weapon. Wolverine goes and tackles Dakin. Dakin swings at him with him. Wolverine just manages to dodge it by inches and then pin Dakin down by his claws or by his wrist so that he's not able to use his claws. Dakin tells Wolverine to let him go, that he's here that uh, Romulus is here and that he's in the other train car and Wolverine lets Dakin know that he's he already realized that and uh, he had already let him go. Wolverine explains that he had to choose between his son or Romulus. He chose to try to save his son. Dakin tells him that he was too late and Wolverine says yes that he realizes that he was too late. Dakin then stabs Wolverine right in his chest, probably right into his heart. Wolverine grabs his chest and collapses to the ground. Next we see Wolverine in Russia. It's been five days since he got stabbed in the chest. Um, he notices that the uh, newspaper is showing uh, the super team with uh, Dakin on it, but everybody thinks it's Wolverine. A gentleman at the... Uh, Bar tells him that it must be nice that your son's pretending to be you. You must be able to get around a lot more since people think that that's that they think Dakin is him and therefore they're not following Wolverine as much. Um, Wolverine explains that yes, that's a good thing, but uh, the person that he's after, Romulus, does know that that's Dakin and not him, and so it doesn't really help him that much. Um, the next scene is uh, some prison guards who are worried about this new prisoner who's showing up. And uh, lo and behold, the buzzers open, the doors open to the prison, and they're getting ready to take this prisoner to solitary confinement. 
and who is it but our favorite Russian weapon, Omega Red. That's where the book leaves off. It's a really good book. Uh, it was a bit of a fast read, I realized. Um, the artwork was excellent, though, and uh, pretty much predictable what we saw happen. Um, I'm a little kind of um, leery about this Miramesa blade being in his hand and adamantium covering it, and that's supposed to protect him. Uh, since when did adamantium stop it? I thought it could cut through anything. If so, it really shouldn't be able to be bonded to even bone because it could cut. It should mess with uh, uh, Dakin's uh, center claw bone. Um, there's a lot of stuff that doesn't quite make sense here. Um, a Maramesa blade, in fact, uh, he broke the tip off of it. I never realized that it was that easy to break, uh, but apparently you can break off a tip. Um, so there's a lot of weird stuff about uh, this all being put together like that. Um, there was some uh, information about uh, Dakin, if he uses the claw uh, and he doesn't use them right, it could actually uh, fracture into pieces and hurt him. So there's a lot of weird stuff going on right now, but it's interesting. Uh, so definitely pick up this book, um, and uh, if there's any questions or comments, um, put them down there, uh, and uh, we'll see you next issue.